What's up, guys? This is Wilfred Williams. Welcome to Cool Conversations. Uh, today we have the legendary herself, AJ Andrews, here with us. AJ, welcome to the show. We're excited to have you. Guys, give it up for AJ. Hey, thanks so much for having me. Excited to get the core and move it in grooving this morning. All right, AJ. So we're gonna we're gonna get into a little bit of warming up, get ready, get our bodies ready before we start this core workout. So, AJ, um, how how's your holiday going? It's going good. I'm home with my family and able to really spend some time, which is amazing because not everybody's able to do that. How about you? I'm doing well. You know, I'm back home in my hometown. Uh, it's the off season, so you know it's. Kinda, Should I be doing what you're doing? No, you can do whatever you want to do. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> Everybody's body is different, you know. Everybody's body. Is different. For me, I haven't really worked out all week because I, I took. Oh, a I'm a big yogi, so. That's what I've been doing. Yeah, it's awesome. How long have you been doing that? Um, I've been doing, I really got started after I had surgery in 2016, because that was really like the only active thing I could do. So since, well, no, I had surgery in 2017. So since 2017, I've been pretty heavy. Guys, if you're, if you're, if you're working out with us today, we have three workout, we have three um, exercise in each blocks. So we'll have four blocks and uh, we're going to be working for 20 seconds. So the first block is going to be a side plank with a knee, an alternating side plane with the knee drive. So we are here, alternating side plane with the knee drive. All you're doing is just alternating, just like this for 20 seconds. That's the first exercise. The second exercise is gonna be a military plank, military plank, so you're here up and down, okay? And then the third one is gonna be, we're gonna be here in a reverse plank Okay, make sure your hips is up and you're gonna go from this position to this position. Boom, just like this. Let's do it. All right. Whew. You're already you just, tired? <laughs> I'm already tired. You guys ready? And we're working. Let's go. We're working on uh, alternating side plank. There we go. So, when did you start playing softball? <laughs> um, I started playing softball when I was 11, which is a lot later than most. Here we go. We're on to the next one. Okay. Yeah. 20 seconds. So, yeah, I started playing over here in Oldsmar, Florida, or Clearwater area. Was, uh, was softball like your... your your first passion or did you play three sports? seconds until work no actually softball was probably like the one of the last sports i had picked up honestly um i played actually soccer i was a huge soccer player for a while where's the reverse plank if i go. didn't go to college for softball it probably would have been soccer no way um, what position i was a forward but i also did midfield a little bit but mainly a forward Mainly forward. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so you're a, you're like a goal scorer. You're like one of those. Yeah, it really depends on what team I was on. Like if it was a team that was you know good, I was a forward. If it was a team that was a little bit eh, I was in the midfield. I was a midfielder. Wow. Any? Um, do you have any highlight clips? We would love to see that. I was young, but yeah, there should be some. I stopped once I got to high school. So I played all the way up until high school. So right around 14 is when I had to let it go. They start recruiting for softball really early. Right. So it was hard to kind of do both. Okay, no, I understand. I understand for sure. I mean, it was the same thing. I played a little bit of basketball. I wasn't great. I weren't, I weren't great at it, but then around 13, um, you know, I had to make a decision as well about soccer. Man. Yeah, yeah, no, I played, yeah, so I loved every sport. I, I literally tried just about everything. And um, people ask me, like, when, why did I choose softball? I really don't have an answer. I don't know. I don't really, there isn't like a day I remember where, like, this is it. But mm -hmm. I'm thankful that that was my course because 
I've been able to do so much with my life with softball. Really cool. All right, here we go. So we're back. We're back on. We're back to the second, second, second uh, of the of that same workout that we were doing. So we're gonna go back to it. Second round. Here we go. And we're working. What is the biggest misconception of softball? Um, I would say that it's easier than baseball is the biggest misconception. Yeah, here we go. We're a uh, military plane right now. Ready in three, two, one, let's go. I've, heard, I've actually heard that before. So, You've heard that before? Yeah, that. Softball is easier easier than baseball, but I don't believe it is. And you heard that from what? A baseball player? Yep. Okay. Well, there you go. Exactly. Was he 13? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> yeah, there you go. It's very, go. that crowd is very typical. <laughs> Here we go. Reverse plank. <laughs> Three, two, one. Let's go. <laughs> Yeah, no, softball is by no means easier than baseball. It is a faster game. People think that just because the field is like shorter, that it's easier to do things. But in reality, it's harder to hit a softball than it is to hit a baseball. And time. Um, but you know, it's not to say, I mean, baseball is a hard game, right? Any sport that we play, that we master is a hard game. But um, yeah, softball is just as difficult as baseball, I mean, you think about it, you take all things baseball players have to do and move them closer mm -hmm. for, especially for defenders, that's twice as hard and twice as scary. So it really is, um, but you know, needless to say, right. baseball players that are professional baseball players don't go around saying they think softball is easier. Just, just, you know, that yeah. crowd. No, I mean, the 20 and under. For me, for me, I don't think any sport is easy, period. Right, so, I agree. I mean, because <laughs> it is so difficult to to like to to master a sport, and so to play at that level, to play at that professional level, it is difficult. I mean, you might you you might be able to you might be able to be decent at you know playing it within with your friends, but to play at a high level, it's not easy at all. Oh no, and no sport. Like I mean. I'm going to tell you I love playing softball. Softball is no thing to me, but if you were to put me in gymnastics, I'm going to look like a fool. If you were to put me in, you know what I mean? Like, there's just, I think it's so funny how people talk about other sports that they don't play, right? Because, first of all, everyone had to work extremely hard to get to the high level that they are. You can play a sport, no problem, but to be literally the best of the best in that sport, right. that deserves respect regardless of the sport. And, um, but yeah, no, I think that sports are no joke and we all work hard for our perspective sport. So it's interesting to throw us in another one and see what we would do. I'm working hard. So you talked about, um, you know, you got injured in 2016, correct? 17, but yeah. 17. Um, and so you also won a very important, important award. I won the Wrongs Go Glove Award. So that is the first, I was the first woman to win that award. And it is an award given to Major League Baseball players prior to me for most or best defensive player uh, that year in that position. But what's interesting about the softball one is like in baseball, every position gets a gold glove. So you get one for the best center fielder, best right fielder, best shortstop, right? But we didn't get positions. So there's just one given overall. So I was the best defender. It's, you know, it's an honor and it's, it's amazing. It's definitely something I think that young baseball players strive to achieve when they're young, right? Like I want to be a gold glover. Um, so I think that for history to be made in 2016, that was only an opportunity for young girls to have those dreams as well. That's amazing. Honestly, that is absolutely amazing. And you also got a feature in ESPN body issue um, yep, I was in the body issue as well. So like toward more the beginning of 2017 or toward, yeah, 2017, I was in the body issue. 
Yeah, following up, following the line of many many great athletes that have been a part of it. Yeah, it was exciting. It was really cool. I was in a um, it was a dried lake out in California or Nevada area, and it was very secret agent like. Like you couldn't. I was being like passed in different cars, seriously. So someone picked me up, drove me to one location. And then someone, because they couldn't know the location, someone else picked me up and drove me to another location. It was very secret agent, and but it was super, super cool and amazing experience. And I'm so thankful I was able to be a part of it. <laughs> secret agent, that is, that is crazy. That is insane. Yeah. Nobody knew exactly where you're gonna go. Yeah, no, and I never really knew. I wasn't like told, I think they, I mean, they told me later where I was, but in that moment, because they don't want anyone to leak anything out. It's supposed to be like this huge reveal who's in the body issue that I knew very little information going into everything. It was just kind of trust us. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just trust us. We're just, we're not, I promise you, we're not kidnapping you. Yeah, <laughs> no, I mean, it didn't, it didn't feel like that. It really didn't. It just was like, everything was just very, very secretive and yeah. but i think that gives like a really cool aspect because you feel like you're a part of this huge reveal like oh there's only what maybe 50 people in the world that know that i'm doing this not just me but like all the athletes are doing this total right and then you have this huge reveal so it was really cool to be a part of that process that is amazing um so we're gonna get into the second second block of this um uh, i mean that is just incredible to know that, you know, you were a part of that body issue that you weren't afraid to show young athletes. You weren't afraid to show young athletes that it's okay. I, I, I saw I saw the little interview that you did that, you know, you wanted to show girls that it is okay to be, to feel amazing, to feel beautiful, to feel muscular, um, to not be afraid to show out their muscle. And so I really, I really appreciate um, hearing that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, no, that was important to me, you know, for a long time growing up. I've always been very cut, right? Like even if I never lifted a weight in my life, I had, I always had arm definition. And so right. it was just, you know, for a long time, I was very insecure about it. I mean, again, those 13 year old boys, right? They have a lot to say. And so, <laughs> you know, just kind of, you know, there's just, I had been very insecure about that. And it wasn't until college where I was like, AJ, are we going to worry about how big your arms get? Or are we going to be an All-American this year? And so, you know, that was really the switch. And, but it, again, it didn't happen until college. And so I wanted it to be a message where I could tell girls, you don't have to worry about that. That is not important. These people that are saying these things are going to be so insignificant once you reach your goals. Yeah. But, you know, there's a lot of studies that go on with young girls in which at a certain point, which is around about 13, 14 years old, they give up sport and it's right. because they don't want to be too manly or they want to chase boys, you know, X, Y, Z. And yeah. I was hoping that my message could be that you are powerful and you should be proud and know that there's so much beauty in the power that you have. Max, preach. Hey, we're go I'm going to quote you on that too. I'm going to quote you. Do it. Do it. <laughs> All right. So here's the next one. We're gonna get into playing elbow to elbow. So we're gonna be here. I'm gonna go elbow to elbow. And that's gonna be the next one. And then we're gonna go, we're gonna be here. I call these the beast. We're in this position, these so shoulder taps. And we're from here. Okay. And then we're gonna go plank to a touch. So we'll be here in this position. And all we're doing is touching our toes and back. All right. All right, let's get it. Here we go. Starting. Here we go, and we're working. So, I mean, you're you're an amazing athlete, right? So, I'm guessing nutrition is huge for you as an athlete, right? Yeah. What is your go-to meal before and time? What is your go-to meal before working out and after workout? Um, a lot of the time it depends on how much time I have. <laughs> you know, as athletes, we are always moving. So that really just depends. So if I don't have a lot of time, I will eat a banana or two bananas because bananas are really great for providing a lot of energy. So you don't really need to eat like a huge meal if you're just going to a quick workout. Um, but if I do have more time, 
Then my go-to is everything bagel, avocado, onion, tomato, and I'll add some prosciutto on top. Uh, what? That's my go-to breakfast if I have time to make it. <laughs> And then after it really is just. You said a kush. What, what is that? Say it again. Prosciutto. What is that? You never heard of prosciutto? No, never. You need to be cultured. Um, well, <laughs> man, I, I'm, I'm asking you now. Here we go. <laughs> so prosciutto is like a, um, it's like a ham almost, but it's not. And it's, it's like a, it's a very thin piece. I don't know what part of the pig it is, but it's very thin. And I lived in Italy for three months. And so that's really where they eat a lot of prosciutto. They eat a lot of those cured meats. And um, yeah, it's amazing. And granted in Italy, it was a lot healthier. So I you know, thought in my mind, it'd be a lot healthier here too. So I don't really eat ham. If I eat anything like that, I eat prosciutto. So yeah, you try. You can get it at any grocery store. All right, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to uh, message that to me, so I remember. <coughs> I actually cook mine, so oh, you it's cook? already cooked. You can eat it out of the package, but um, I like the crispness to it, so I'll put it on the stove for really just a few minutes, let it get a little crispy, and then I'll put it on my bagel. Oh yeah, fact. So uh, whenever whenever we can travel again, just just know just know um, I'm making my way um, to to visit you, um, so we can so you can cook that for me. I'll You're gonna what? I'll come visit so you can cook it for me. I'll come visit. Okay, I got you. Yeah, it's good. It's really nice. good. I love it. We're gonna go visit her so she can make and a little food. feta cheese. And it's perfect. It's done. Some 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 feta cheese. Yeah, some feta. All right. <laughs> So you so so you're not the salt person. You're the you're the feta. You're, you're the yeah. Feta. I'm feta. This is my feta sprinkle because feta comes in chunks, so you kind of have to do like this to kind of sprinkle it around. Back to the here we go. Back to the um, the second round. Ready? Set. Let's go. Wait. Oh no. Mm. Let's get it. Let's get it. What are some, what are, what are, what are three things you eat the most? Three things I need the most? Eat, eat, eat. Oh, eat the most. Um, Here we go. Please show the tap. <laughs> I don't know. I'm very, I don't have like anything I eat a lot. I eat a lot of Greek um, salads. I love Greek salads. I love cucumbers. Um, and I love shrimp. I eat a lot of shrimp, shrimp and salmon. Ooh, here we go. I used, I used to eat a lot of seafood this past season. Yeah, seafood is the best in my opinion. I agree, and time. I definitely agree, seafood is definitely the best. Um, I, 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 ate a lot of, I ate a lot of seafood this past season, because I mean, I just I wanted to cut down eating meat a little bit. Um, so I'll only, I'll only eat meat on like the weekends, but I ate a lot of seafood during the weekdays. Yeah, uh, no, I agree. I try to cut down on meat as well, just because meat creates like a lot of mucus in your body. And so I just really wanted to, to nix that as much as possible. Yeah, so here we go. We're gonna get into the Third block. Okay, this one is gonna be a reverse crunch with a twist. Okay, reverse crunch with a twist. So we're here, back down. That's the that's the that's the first one. Second one is gonna be uh, we're gonna be here in this position. That's the second one. Third one is gonna be a butterfly sit up. Gonna be here. Okay. Got it. Got it. All right, here we go. Starting in three, two, one. Let's get it.
So what is like your what's your workout routine like for you right now that since you're not in season? Uh, I think really just I get up early in the morning and I typically go to yoga Here. and then I will eat some food prep for my day. I'll go work out and then from after workouts, I'll go hit or go to the fields. And sometimes that order switches, but that's basically my workout routine as far as those four things. Make sure I get those done in my day. Here we go. Butterfly sit up. So how many, I mean, so that's like what, how many hours a day do you think that is for you? Oh, that's most of the day. <laughs> I mean, yoga is an hour. I'll work out for two. I'll hit probably for two. And then I'll probably be on defense for at least one hour. So three, five, six, probably like six or seven hours of no. training a day. And you guys, guys, and y'all said that athletes don't put in work. Listen, we're working just as much. We are working just as much as an eight hour day person sitting in an office. Oh no, it's more than that because I mean, we have to, I mean, that's just actually what I'm there doing, right? And then we have to prepare our mental game. And yes. That's like a whole separate entity. And then I didn't even mention like rehab or going oh. to treatment afterwards, right? Oh. So, I mean, treatment is another hour. Working on your body <laughs> is another hour. So that's, I mean, I think it's probably 10 hour plus days at athletes have. Every day. That's what I'm saying. All right, here we go. Back at it again. Ready? Three, two, one. Let's get it. So when you're working out, what kind of music you like listening to? What? When you work out, what type of music do you listen to? Oh, it all depends. I mean, every day I'm honestly in a different mood, but I love like 90s r and I know it sounds like, oh, that's what you work out to, but yes, I absolutely love it. And then, you know, I love, I always love some Drake. I love some Young Blue. Kevin Gates is probably my number one go-to though, as far as like, if I'm really in the mood, but I also love Janae Aiko and um, Summer Walker. Like those are my people. So I have a, it's a huge variety, but you'll probably most likely catch me listening to some 90s R&B. Okay, here we go. 90s R&B. Oh, let's see. What are some artists? Mary J. What? Mary J. Blige? No, yeah. she's not always. I mean, yeah, yeah. She comes on there, but she's not like the number one that I listen to. Oh, okay. Who's the number one? Uh, I don't know. It just depends. But a lot of John B. come on. A lot of Tony Braxton. A lot of, you know... <laughs> Black Street, Jodeci, all of that good stuff. Jodeci, yes. I mean, yeah, that is that is. I love Mary J. Blige. Don't get me wrong. It's just as far as the playlist, it just pops in and out all the time. Yeah, those are kind of the ones that keep resurfacing for sure. And it's kind of weird though. Nineties R and B to listen to to work out. That is that is. I mean, hey, you get you get in what you get in. Uh, and I love it. For me, like, I'm driving in a car. I love belting to some 90s R&B. Like, I feel good, right? When you're working out, you should feel good. And R&B makes true. me feel good. That is true. That is true. All right, here we go. You ready for this last round? Because I'm kind of like, uh, that last round kind of kind of got me a little bit. <laughs> um, here we go. The last round. Last round, guys. Last round. We're almost there. Uh, straight leg Russian twist. So we're here. Holding here, straight leg, Russian twist. And then from there, we're gonna go leg raises. We're gonna go right, left, and then double back down. And then we're just gonna keep going. And then from there, we're gonna go star crunch here, alternating, reaching, touching. Okay. Here we go. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. Working. We're working. Three, two, one.
Let's go. Let's go. Twist. I don't remember the first. Oh, okay. Just straight leg, Russian twist. So I'm going to throw out some questions at you. Okay. You just got to answer one of them. Give me, just answer one of them. Okay. Ready? Yep. Here we go. Straight leg, Russian twist. Okay. A big home run or a game winning dive catch? A uh, game winning diving catch. I mean, don't get me wrong, the home run is exciting, but like, imagine there being bases loaded, okay? Someone okay. hits one in the gap and everyone's like, oh my God, like, that's it. They're about to win the game. And someone comes out of nowhere and Here makes an incredible catch. Like, come on. That would be, I'd be like, oh my God. Like, the home run is like exciting. It's like, heck yeah. But the diving catch, that's like something you just sort of like in awe. You know what I mean? It's like, don't get me wrong. Home runs are cool. They're, they're hard to come by, but it happens all the time. Amazing diving catches don't happen all the time, right? That, it's just, that, so that's, that's to me. And, you know, that's what I do, so. That's what she do. That's what she That's do. what I do. All right, here we go. Back at it. Second round. We're going to go. Ready? Two. Yeah. One. Let's get it. All right. Riri or Beyonce? Ah, oh, I love them both, but I'm I'm a I'm on a part of the Beehive for sure. Okay, Tupac or Biggie? Tupac. He was to me more than a rapper. He was an activist. He was just a philanthropist. Like I would love to just even sit down and have a conversation with him outside of rap. Here we go. Um, Shorts or sweats? Which ones? Shorts or sweats? Sweats, always. I know. I agree. 100%. They're just so comfy all the time. Okay, here we go. Last one. Last exercise. Star crunch. Right here. Let's get it. Salty or sweet? Um, salty or sweet? Mm hmm I guess salty. I would say sour over sweet. I don't like, I don't like sweets that much, but I love like sour stuff. Sour? Yeah. Ooh. Well, um, let's see, Drake. Actually, you're going to pick Drake. You're going to pick, I'm, I'm not even going to ask this. I'm not going to ask this. I know you're going to pick Drake. What are you going to say? Drake or who? I was going to say Drake or Kevin Gates. Oh, um, gosh, they're just so different. You know, it really is just like a different vibe you'd have to be going for. But I think that probably Gates, to be honest. But if I'm in like my feelings or something. Oh, like, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. It's just a different vibe. Like if I just want to chill, it'll be Drake. Or, you know, if I'm just, like, getting ready, just whatever. It's Drake. But Kevin Gates is, like, I'm feeling myself. Like, that's what I'm listening to when I'm, I'm trying to get on a level. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but that's all because I went to LSU. Like, I don't <laughs> – I wasn't a huge Drake or Kevin Gates fan before I went to school in Louisiana. They love Gates out there. So, it just had a big influence on me. Yeah. Um, so, question. Do you, do you ever – so – that uh, what's that? What's the lady that is now the the new manager, the new GM for that baseball team? What baseball team is the lady the new GM for? So Kim Ng is the new GM for Miami. Yes, that is. Um, I I read about it, but I forgot I forgot uh, what team it was for. Um, the Marlins. I mean, her, yeah. Her her being there, I mean that's amazing. Do you ever think that? Do you think that a female will ever play in the MLB? I mean, yeah, I would hope so. I to, honestly, when things like this happen, in my opinion, my my thought is about damn time, right? Like none of this is like, ooh, congrats. Like, ooh, that's so cool. It's like, ooh, she should have gotten this probably 10 years ago. I mean, she's been a part of the MLB for 30 plus years. She's yeah. been in every single position. Like there's not a single thing in baseball operations that she has not touched. And so for her to, I mean, she's been interviewing for 
GM jobs for years. And I've actually had the opportunity to have conversations with Kim Ng and she's like, absolutely amazing. Absolutely. Like one of the most intelligent women I've ever met. And so for her to have this opportunity to finally be a GM and it's, then it's from Derek Jeter. Right. And like, she was a part of the world series teams with the Yankees when Jeter was playing. And, you know, I think it's just an amazing thing that it all came together that way. And Derek Jeter, I've done a lot of things with Players Tribune, and he's always been someone that's been a huge advocate for women in sports and just women in general. And so I think that it's amazing to see the path that all of this has kind of led to. And um, for me, you see so many women in sports achieving so many great things, whether it's being the first GM or being the first to coach in MLB, NFL, whatever it is. You know, and I think for me, it's never been a matter of these women weren't qualified. It's never been a matter that they couldn't do these things, right? It's finally that these gatekeepers are just opening the door for them. They've yeah. always been there knocking on it. Now the door is finally open. Sure. I mean, I've, um, I've seen, I've seen recently there have been just like more doors being open. I've seen recently that there's just more doors being open for for these women. Um, I mean, especially in the, especially in the NFL. Um, I mean, recently as well, you've seen women in, in NBA getting the chances to, to be assistant coaches. Uh, I mean, it's just, they're, they're, they really are qualified for it. But the, like you said, the door have not been opened. And so it would be really, it would be great to see them step into that position because, I mean, you, you never know. They, I mean, there's, there's some really, really qualified uh, women out there for for these jobs, but they, they just haven't get, um, gotten the chance to do that. Yeah, 100%. And you know, I just think representation is huge, right? At the end of the day, you have to sometimes see things to believe things in order to achieve them. And when you have these women achieving these amazing feats, it's only going to allow so many young women to believe that they can as well. And you know, it's to the point now where you're people are not allowed to keep these doors closed, right? I mean, Kim Ng, what I think is amazing about when I say we're better together as far as women in sports or just sports as a whole is now that that door's been open for Kim Ng, there's absolutely no excuse for any of those other doors to stay shut, right? So now a woman steps up, whether it's baseball, basketball, football, soccer, hockey, whatever it is, right? Kim Ng being that person that is now a GM, right? For someone to be like, ah, well, I don't know. It's like, oh, you don't know, right? There's no excuse anymore. And I think that that is only going to continue to trickle into other sports and you're going to see more doors opening because while these women have always been qualified, there's always been these reasons that individuals have made up to say that they shouldn't be a part of this job. Men coach women all the time. Why can't women do the same thing? And so for me, it's, it's an amazing thing to see this representation take place because it's only going to continue to grow. Yes. So, uh, so pretty much AJ is ready for the MLB right now. I'm no, but the thing is, is like, I love what I do, right? I, so I, I, don't think, ever I, think, you're, I think you're ready for the MLB. I mean, those, them catches? Yo. Yeah, but the thing is, is that what I don't want is for the MLB to be the standard, right? So what I do in softball is amazing on its own. I'm an amazing softball player, and I don't need to live up to being a baseball player, right? I don't need to be me being what I'm doing as a softball player is standalone, the best you'll ever see. I don't need to be compared to a baseball player to be like, oh, she's doing this, she should play baseball. No, she's doing this, she should continue to dominate softball and you can watch both, right? So I think it's so important for young girls to understand that men are not the pinnacle, right? right. They're doing great, they're doing whatever it is that they're doing and you can too in your sport. You don't have to try to live up to being this man and, or being in this male sport in order to be seen as great. So I think that that's definitely an important message. I appreciate the compliment. But I do think that I'm amazing in softball and women should know that softball is a pinnacle and it is top tier and what you should strive for. I, I mean, it's great that you said, it's great that you said that because you hear that a lot. You hear that a lot that, oh, she's doing great here. Oh, she can definitely, she can definitely play in, in the, in the NBA or she can definitely play in the, in the MLB or she can definitely play in, in with the men's soccer. You can, de you, you definitely hear that, but well, those are things that are different. Like there's women playing baseball, right? So if I was playing baseball and you were like, oh, all right, AJ, you're, you're it. You're ready for MLB. Like, okay, cool. Like I'm playing baseball, but mm -hmm. softball is a different sport. You know what I mean? So there's no, there's nothing to say that a woman isn't ready to play baseball if that's what she's playing. But if you're playing softball 
don't think that you have to try to be a baseball player in order to be successful because you don't. And, you know, I think in a good example, Sarah Fuller, right, who is now the Vanderbilt kicker, and she's made absolute history playing D1 football and starting in a game and making a kick the other weekend, right? And so, um, or scoring the goal the other weekend. And I think that what is so cool about everything she said is that when she's asked, like, are you nervous? She's like, no, this is definitely not half as nerve wracking as playing in the SEC finals and winning an SEC championship for soccer, right? She's like, this is just another game. And that, that's the mentality though. Like just because she's playing with these men doesn't mean the standard has changed. Doesn't mean anything about her performance or who she is as a person is different. Like you're not elevating yourself because you're playing with men. You're elevating yourself because you're ready for a new competition and a new sport, period. And I think that that what she said, while it's so subtle, and I'm sure she didn't mean for it to come off any kind of way, I took it as, no, she's a competitor and yeah. competing for a championship game is yeah. always going to be more nerve wracking than just going out and playing another game. Yeah, I agree. With men or without. Yes, I definitely agree. Well, AJ, thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for this conversation and this workout. I mean, I'm a big fan. Um, I've been a fan for a long time. And uh, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And uh, I look forward to working with you more with Zach Steffen and his uh, Voice Now um, campaign that he got going on. Uh, and so have a wonderful day. Uh, happy holidays to you and your family. And I hope you uh, have a great, great start of your 2021 next year. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. And yeah, I'm excited for everything that's to come. And I hope you have an amazing 2021 as well. Thank you. Guys, take care. Have a great one. Bye.